Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. This one's going to be a technical one. In this edition we're going to talk about the specialization of BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy, for what is known as notifications. So we're going to talk about notifications. So the notion here is let's assume our ESP32 is acting as a BLE server. What that means is a partner can connect to it and request the values of characteristics. So imagine, for example, that we have a, a BLE server and a BLE client, and the client can connect to our BLE server. We'll imagine that's ESP32, and the client can request data from the server. Great, wonderful. Now, our BLE server, our ESP32, may be monitoring a sensor. It may be looking at uh, uh, input data, for example, temperature or something else, and it may wish to push from the BLE server to the client data changes. So rather than the client pull the server, maybe the server, once it's connected to the client, maybe the server wants to notify the client whenever a value changes. So the notion here is notification and it's the the inverse if you like of the client performing reads and write requests. A client performing a read explicitly asks the server give me your value whereas notification is the notion that the server when it detects something that it believes is going to be of interest to the client will push to the client the, the the distinctive the, the, the change notification all right so that's the high level so in the last set of uh, uh, videos I've been making so this this is one of a series we've been looking at uh, Bluetooth low energy C++ classes specifically we've been looking at classes which are written in C++ that encapsulate the BLE functions so uh, this video assumes you've got some degree of familiarity with that if not go and have a study of those videos so here we see a BLE server that was written using the C++ classes on the ESP32. And just to run through it real quickly, when the run method is called, what we do is we create ourselves a BLE device on our ESP32. We create ourselves a server. We're going to register callback so that when a client connects to the server, we get called back. We then create a service on the BLE server, and we say that that service uh, uh, has a characteristic. So we then create a characteristic, and the characteristic allows us to read, write, and perform notifications. Uh, we'll come back to this concept of a descriptor shortly. So now we've created a server, a service, and a characteristic upon the service. We then start the service, and we start advertising. What that means is that when this application runs, the uh, ESP32 will start listening because uh, we'll start listening, sorry, because we're started here. We'll start listening for incoming client requests. And when a client requests to read or write the characteristic value, we will get, we will push, we will retrieve, <laughs> the server will send that data back to the client. Now, notice that we defined here server callbacks. Now these server callbacks are callback functions which get invoked when something happens at the server level. Now at the server level there's two methods that we're interested in. One is called onConnect and the other is called onDisconnect. So the onConnect function here that I've written will be invoked whenever a client connects to the BLE server. So what do we want to do? In my logic, I've created another three RTOS task, and whenever a client connects to the server, we start a task, and this task just loops forever. And what this task does, and this is where things get interesting, what this task does is it sleeps for two seconds, and then it's got a counter, which it increments, and it sets the value of the characteristic to the value of the counter and then performs what's called a notify. So it says to the characteristic, this is this is client, uh, I'm sorry, this is code that you write for your server, it says notify. And what that means is it notifies the connected client that the value has changed. So what this task does is every two seconds it increments the value of the characteristic and then asks 
to notify the client that the characteristic value has changed. So the server is now running through a loop here and every two seconds increments a numeric value of the characteristic and sends to the client the notification that the value has changed. And this will include the data, which is the current value of the characteristic. So when this runs, every few seconds, we will see that the client has had the value updated. So let's go ahead and deploy this application and let's take a look. So I've already compiled it. Now I've already uh, pushed it to my ESP32. Let me run my ESP32 up. Lots of ESP32 debug information that's part of the BLE classes. But the bottom line is that we are now started. So the ESP32 in this example is now advertising the service described in this sample code. Okay, great. Now let's bring up a cell phone. Here's a cell phone coming up here. So here's a cell phone. And if I was to perform a scan, we will find, come on, oh, there we go, uh, there we go. Let's clear all my, uh, all my, all my information. Let's clear the scan information and let's perform a scan. And here is my ESP32 device. So my ESP32 device is advertising. Let's go over here and connect to my ESP32. Let's also bring up the console here so we can see what it looks like when we connect. Bear with me a second while I bring the screen up. There we go. Now let's perform a connect. So we're connecting from the uh, um, um, phone to the ESP32. And if I drill down into the characteristics and then click this button, and this will, this, will, this will come in a second, we'll see here that the value of the characteristic is incrementing every two seconds and being pushed to my cell phone. So every two seconds, this client has connected to my ESP32. I'm sorry, the, not every two seconds. Let's stop here. The client, my phone, has connected to the ESP32 server uh, using Bluetooth. And then, because of the connection, every two seconds, a push notification is performed from the ESP32 BLE server out to the BLE client, which in this case is my phone. And we see that the phone, which is not doing pulls, it's performing, notif it, it has requested notifications and is being pushed by the ESP32 server. Gosh, words, sorry about that. Now, in order for the ESP32 to send notifications to the client, the client should indicate to the server that it wishes to actually receive notifications. Otherwise, there will be a waste of energy going on. And this is something BLE wants to do. The LE, low energy, it wants to be uh, economic with energy. So a BLE protocol environment associates with each characteristic which is going to be notified upon something called a BLE descriptor, which is known as the client characteristic configuration. So this is BLE protocol here. Its UUID code is 2902. Now the characteristic here, let me bring up the web page on that characteristic. The characteristic here, it's not a characteristic, the descriptor. The descriptor is called the client characteristic configuration and it has two bit fields in it. One for something called notifications and one for indications. If it's a one, we're allowed to perform notifications. If it's a zero, we're not allowed to perform notifications. So this is a descriptor associated with the characteristic that exists on the BLE server that can be remotely enabled or disabled by a client. And if that characteristics value is enabled, then the BLE server will check the value of that descriptor before it performs a notification. And if the value of the bit is zero, then no notification will be performed. 
So from my client, let me switch off that bit. And now, every time the ESP32 server performs a notification, before the notification actually make it to the, makes it to the network, it will check the local value of that descriptor. And if that descriptor value is off, then it won't even bother sending the notification over the network. However, if we enable it, then uh, at this point, the notifications will be allowed to proceed. Now, with those words in place, let's go back and look at our, client, our BLE server code. Here, we created our characteristic, and then after creating the characteristic, we created a descriptor. And the descriptor was based upon one of the specialized descriptor classes, the 2902. And the 2902 provides the descriptor for UUID 2902, which allows us to expose the settings of the remote uh, ability to perform the uh, notification or not. All right, so lots of words. There's a lot to digest in this, in this uh, technical tutorial. So the high level being that there's the concept of notifications. And a notification is the ability for a server to push to a connected client changes in BLE characteristic values. Now, if a client connects to a BLE server, then if the server exposes the ability to perform notifications, it should be the client's responsibility to declare that it is actually interested in receiving such notifications. And it does that by performing a remote update on the BLE descriptor code 2902, known as the client characteristic configuration, to declare to the server that if the server wishes to perform a notification, that the client will in fact be interested in receiving such. So when a server performs a notification, and it can perform a notification at any time, the logic of the encapsulated class here will be to see if there is a 2902 descriptor associated with the characteristics and if there is what is the bit value for the enablement of being able to send the notification if it's off we don't bother sending the notification if it's on only then will we send the notification now, in uh, BLE, there's two concepts. One's called notification and the other's called indication. Now, the distinction between them is that a notification, when the server performs a notification, it will receive a response saying that the notified was received. If it performs an indication, it's almost exactly the same thing, but if it performs an indication, it's a fire and forget and will not be told by the client whether or not that data change was actually received by the client. I'm just going to call it notification for short, but that encompasses both notification and indication. Now, to try and get all of this right using the ESPIDF framework by itself is actually pretty complicated. There's a lot of a lot of plumbing you have to do. So these C++ BLE classes here try and make this a higher level proposition. And again, the logic here is we say we have got a device, a BLE device, we create a server, we create a service, we create a characteristic, we create a descriptor. And then we start it, and that's all. So there's 10 lines of code here is all that's needed to get the system up and running. When a client connects, uh, we get called back. And in the connect, I start a three RTOS task. And in the task, I just go into a loop. And every two seconds, change the value of the characteristic and then push a notification to, to the client. The notification may or may not make it onto the network depending upon whether the client has changed or toggled or enabled the descriptor bit which says that it is interested in receiving notifications. Uh, again, this has been a lot of stuff and I hope you've had you've got something from this. Um, 
I suggest that uh, I'll put this sample up, suggest you get to study and play with it. The uh, sample uh, client program I'm using here is the Nordic NFR Connect, NF, NRF Connect, which is a, a, a free Android-based application. So this isn't code I've written. This is off the shelf, used to illustrate the uh, connectivity of BLE. And it's got all kinds of great BLE-related stuff in here. And uh, you can use this, connect this to your ESP32, and you can do development testing and see that your BLE work is, in fact, working. I hope uh, you get something useful from this. I thank you for your time, and I look forward to making more of these videos in the future. Thanks now, and bye-bye.